You know what? It's been about a month or so since Siri last announced the lens, so it's time they announced another one. 75 millimeter T2.9, anamorphic, of course. All right, let's go. For the sake of transparency, Siri has gifted me this lens, and I'll mention that they have an Indiegogo on for this right now. But anything I say about this product in this video are my own thoughts and not Siri's. You're probably thinking, oh, they've already announced the 75mm anamorphic lens. No, this is different. 1.6 times. <laughs> for that wider, wider, more letterbox look. It's going to look fantastic. It's going to make these railings look really cool. Oh, look at that repetition. That, um, all right, it's not cool. Maybe look past those railings a bit. Just borrowing Locke's camera now because I've got Panasonic L mount. It's available in all the different mounts, just so you know. Also, as the lens has a fair bit of weight, is manual focus and no stabilization, I need a body like this. Camera body, that is. For in-body stabilization, you can't beat Panasonic. Best in the business. Not enough for me to buy a full frame Panasonic. It's quite a short focus throw. To go out of focus and in focus, it didn't take too much movement to try and get things in focus. It does take just a small movement to get completely out of focus, as you can see by the distance scale seen on both sides of the lens. If you've employed somebody just to stand next to you and to focus for you, you can have you can employ two people, one on either side, one here, one there. The pilot and co-pilot of focusing. All right, let's get some anamorphic action. Of course, anamorphic is all about that flare and the oval bokeh. With 1.6 times, you will get a bit more of that ovalness. Let's get some of those bokeh balls. Let me get you in the frame. Let me get those bokeh balls in the background. They're going to be some del delicious balls there, right there. Not something I really want to be saying when lock is the main point of focus. Very smooth rings. Everybody loves smooth rings. Also, another thing I don't really want to be saying when lock happens to be the main subject. And I want to get this wide open just to show you what it's like. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Have it wide open. T2.9. Always good to know how it performs at T2.9 because that's where all the fun happens. Just in case you're wondering what's the difference between F and T, F is kind of like, yeah, it's kind of around this, so we'll say it's this aperture. T, whatever, that is exactly what you're getting. No BS. There is a fair heft to this lens. On a lightweight body like the S5, even with the kick-ass penny stabilisation, it's a bit harder to get stable handheld footage compared to the 50. Although it's worth pointing out that the lens does have its own tripod thread. Why have 1.6 times? It just makes that anamorphic look look just a bit sweeter. One of the benefits of the series is that the focusing distance, closest focusing distance is actually quite quite close. 85 centimetres. I don't think every anamorphic shot has to be flare, <laughs> oval bokeh. I think that's one thing that is sometimes overdone. Sometimes it's used as a bit of a flex. Like, boom, I'm shooting this anamorphic. But you probably do want to know what the flare looks like anyway. Let's get little streaks of light there. That's what it's all about. You get a bokeh and a flare, all in one. And that's quite a nice flare action there. It's almost stretching from one side of the frame to the other. There we are. Flaring. The anamorphic lens flare is what the Siri does well. It has a cool elongated trail of light. It ghosts a bit, but I think the whole aesthetic will please those wanting to get that cinematic look. That's pretty sweet looking. I don't think the bokeh balls have as pronounced an anamorphic look as the streaky flaring, although the 1.6 times definitely has more elongated oval bokeh than 1.3 times, and the 75mm focal length makes it more apparent than the 50. Might, 75 might seem like a bit of an odd focal length, just slightly longer standard lens. That's, that's kind of nice if you've got that standard mindset, but just want that little bit tighter crop. Kind of makes things a little bit tidier in the frame. The 75mm focal length is going to be great for people shots. The slightly tighter than standard field of view puts the focus nicely on the subject. No distraction from the background too, because the bokeh looks smooth even on those challenging tree out of focus bits. I mean, some anamorphic lenses are a little bit soft wide open. With this, it's, uh, I wouldn't say super sharp, but sharp enough. 
if you're really peeking at those pixels, is a little softer than some modern spherical lenses slap bang in the middle. There's no colour fringing though. Mind you, the softness improves when stopping it down a couple of stops, but the slightly softer image lends itself well to people shots. I don't know if I find it must be something wrong with my eyes. I always find it easier to focus on screens, fingers close up when I do this. <laughs> I'm getting old. 1.6 times and full frame anamorphic is the way to go to maximise that effect. Personally, I like the 75 out of all these series for getting some B-roll footage from a little further away, but also for that shallower depth of field that brings out the best in the oval bokeh that complements the anamorphic look of the image from this lens well.